Hello, everybody, and welcome to my page. Um, it has been so long since I was on. I do do some interviews, but I'm doing more recordings now. I am so excited to be on. Um, and when I emailed Loretta, uh, I was like, okay, else for fun, let's do it. Um, and I wasn't really expecting something back. And when I did get it, and it was that, okay, yeah, we can do it that time. I'm like, oh my God, this is so huge. So um, I am shock shock. Um, uh, and I'm in a very weird uh, sort of, you know, uh, place because I'm like, oh my God, I did not expect this to happen and it's happening. So um, yeah, first let's have Loretta introduce herself. I am sure that will definitely, you know, just be like, whoa um for a second and then we can kick start this interview <laughs> thank you Rain. my name is loretta hidalgo whitesize i live in california uh the united states and ever since i was about six years old i've been passionate about uh human space flight and i um studied really hard and worked my career to become an astrobiologist to, to study how we could live uh off off earth and how could we grow our own food and recycle our air and water uh, and so I have two degrees in, in uh, biology from Stanford and Caltech, and then went to work at NASA. Um, I been to the bottom of the ocean with James Cameron to film an IMAX documentary about uh, life in extreme environments. Worked up in the Canadian Arctic near the North Pole with NASA, uh, studying plant life up there at a, at a crater in the in the term, in the permafrost, and uh, worked for ten years at Zero Gravity Corporation doing and it's this airplane is 727 and we do parabolic flights which is how you can get like about 30 seconds of free fall weightlessness it's like you're floating in space it's just how you train astronauts or prepare your experiments for space flight uh, so i have about four or five hours of weightless time from from that time era of my life that was a ton of fun and um more recently i bought a ticket to fly into space and do a suborbital space flight with virgin galactic in 2005 and then um, became involved with Virgin Galactic in 2015 as a contractor teaching um, the new right stuff training. So sort of training for our scientists and engineers and our, our technicians and um, how to be the use space to bring out the best in themselves and, and work together as a team and um, like get over their upsets or frustrations at work so they can go and be, be their best when they're uh, building our spaceships. So I, uh, during COVID, I took that online and now I do it lead uh, the new right stuff training. We call it space kind training now uh, for the whole community. And I'm really passionate about creating uh, the science fiction future to go along with uh, our spaceships, the, the culture of the science fiction future, the like being able to get along and have and have fun and, and not be stressed out all the time. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know what an introduction you're like, oh my God. Um, so uh, let's start from the beginning again. I am not pointing that you're old, but you're definitely older than 13. Uh, that's my age. Uh, so <laughs> let's start uh, with uh, your childhood aspiration. I understand that you were like really mesmerized by it, but um, how did it become an actual thing? And like from going to like, from being a potential career to it, like how, what was the journey of that? Yeah. Uh, like I remember being in kindergarten, being like six years old and seeing the astronauts on, uh, on the bulletin board at the school and thinking, oh, I want to do that. And that was my goal. And um, it, it wasn't always easy. Like I was sort of, I was sort of dyslexic. I couldn't tell like the letter B from the letter D in, in kindergarten. And so I had to really struggle through some of that, those things in school. But um, uh, but yeah, I did. I did really well, and I knew that I wanted to go to college and study these things. I and it's funny because I um, I grew up in the '80s, and in the '80s, it was before climate change was really something that we thought about a lot. Um, but at the time, we still had, but we still had plenty of big world problems. Don't worry. We had our own. We had our. We had a cold war. We were worried about nuclear war. In the '80s, like the same way we think about climate change is always sort of like ah, on your mind. Like in the '80s. A nuclear war was on our mind. We were always afraid that there was a bomb was going to be dropped and we'd have a big mushroom cloud. So we were worried about nuclear war. We were worried about acid rain. We were worried about there was an ozone hole, a hole in our ozone layer. And we were worried about going whales going extinct. Like these are the things that 
weighed on us in the 80s. And these were really bothering me as a kid. I go, how can I, how am I going to fix all these problems on the earth? The earth has so many problems. Like, I don't know where to start. And I remember at 12 years old being like, you know what, maybe if I work on space, I can help us design systems that teach us how to work together and how to live sustainably and sort of we could solve all the problems at one time. So that was my sort of 12 year old thinking about why I wanted to get into space. And um, after graduating from college, I started, I, I, um, I didn't know what to do. I was scared. Uh, what am I gonna do when I graduate? I have no idea. And there was a, a older a graduate student and he sat down with me and he said, Loretta, you are about to graduate from college. You can do anything you want. So I called up NASA and I said, okay, I wanna work in the astronaut office. And the lady was sort of like, oh, you know, dear, we are not hiring anybody right now. And I was like, I know, I know you're not hiring anyone, but I wanna volunteer. And she didn't know what to say to that. So um, luckily I got my, I, she passed me to somebody else who run their, run their college program. And I got my foot in the door at NASA as a volunteer, which I don't know if they even do anymore, but uh, I was that like passionate. So I went to Houston um, straight out of college as a volunteer. And I met so many other people who love space as much as I did. And I felt like I finally found my people and it was really amazing. And so things sort of went from there. It's been a great journey. Yeah. Um, so the eighties, you say, I think we can actually calculate your age of that, but that's not, that's not the point here. Uh, uh, focusing more, um, you know, nowadays, uh, children, of course, it, it depends on the environment and the time, you know, they grew up in like my time, it was more TV than iPads and mobile all the time. But right now the alpha generation, like my brother and my cousins, uh, they're like glued to their iPad. I used to think that was a grown up thing to say. They are glued to their iPad. Uh, how do you think your, your parents and your environment played a you know, part in you getting to think um, about and you know, to personally really um, you know, brainstorm about solutions or uh, how you could contribute to the society and the issues that the global community was facing at your time. Again, the issues may be a little different, but they're not drastically different. But how do you think can we get the children started to like think about it or not necessarily worry about them, but concern? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, some things I'm really grateful to my parents for is there were two years when I was very young, maybe uh, you know eight or nine, where we didn't even have a television. I don't even know why they got rid of the television, but we didn't have a television for two years. Uh, and I think that was really powerful. I mean, I didn't know what was going on with the shows like my friends did, but I think it got me you know, playing more on my own, going outside more, thinking more. And I think that's a really powerful gift to give kids is more time away from screens. You know, I, I take my kids away during the summer, we go camping and they're like, what, I don't get to play my video game for a week. I'm like, yeah, I know you're gonna survive, trust me. But they learn like, okay, here's the Milky Way galaxy I can see in the sky. And there's other things that are just as amazing. You know, we could play Minecraft with real blocks, you know, on the, in the riverbank and, uh, and have fun that way. So that was really helpful, I think for, my, for me. And then my parents were also very hands-off. You know, my dad was busy and my mom, she didn't worry. That was one of my mom's greatest strengths is that she never worried about us. So, uh, you know, we could run free and go and do things and do what we wanted. And, and we were really learned to be self-reliant and take care of ourselves and, and handle our own problems at a very young age because my mom was so uh, hands off. And my sister and I are so grateful for that because we, we learned how to be resourceful and scrappy and take, and, and take charge and, and do things on our own. Yeah, um, and I want to add on to something you said. Like uh, one of your mom's greatest sense uh, was that she didn't she didn't worry about you guys. And I feel like parents right now, they have you know they are like, oh my god, what is he gonna do? What is he gonna become? So you know they worry a lot. And I feel like that just rather than you know showing the children that they actually care or they're you know they're concerned about their future, it's like oh my god, that's out of pressure. That, that is pressurizing the children nowadays because the parents are so into what are they gonna do, um, not just letting them explore and learn, like really just learn from their own experience rather than their parents, like take all of it. Um, but 
And, you know, now that I, I do have like uh, a younger cousin that I'm really close to that says he wanted to become, he wants to become an astronaut. Usually in our family, we're like, uh, okay, cool, cool, cool aspiration. Or we're like, uh, ha, 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 you know, we just all laugh about it. We, we never really think that he, could, he would actually, or he could actually become an astronaut because we <clears throat> usually laugh a lot of these things off. Uh, but did that ever happen to you? People thinking like, this is impossible. Like you become a, you know, um, a space expert um, and many things that you are. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Um, many of my colleagues talk about, you know, parents, um, teachers, professors even, who scoffed at their aspirations to be an astronaut or their, you know, women who wanted to go into math or science and they got really a lot of, uh, negative responses and pushback on that. Uh, and I, I'm really lucky um, in that I grew up in a really power, a, a powerful woman environment where everyone around me was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, you'll do great. So um, it might've been the opposite. I had a lot of, a lot of support. People really um, helped me believe that I could do anything that I, I set my mind out to. And I really, really thought I could. Yeah. Um, and how was your time volunteering at NASA? I mean, I feel like it took a lot of, you know, courage just like to call up NASA. Hey, yo, I want to work there. I'm pretty sure you not said it like that, though I would. But uh, uh, how, how, how was it like really just volunteering there uh, and fitting into an environment? I mean, I believe you were young if you were out of college. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I volunteered there for just a few months and then I ended up getting hired into a, a job uh, with one of the contractors in Houston, which was great, uh, working on the International Space Station. Um, but my time in Houston was really fun because like I said, I got to meet with my people and the, I fell in with the co-ops and the interns. So the other sort of college age stu students there and they worked in all the different departments, but we all had lunch together every day. And so it was really fun because we were all really passionate about space. We all really wanted to be there. So we're a really strong community and we got together and talked every day. And so sometimes it was fun because we knew more about what was happening at the center than our managers did because we were talking to everybody in every department and they only had a meeting with the other departments like once a week or something. So we felt like we were really plugged in and knew what was happening. And um, we had a lot of fun adventures sort of like trying to help out the management, you know, make things happen across the center. And, I remember one time we had a, a total health and safety day uh, at NASA and I volunteered to host a morale booth because I felt like uh, morale was, you know, people's attitudes and, and emotional state was sort of the most important thing. Um, you know, especially for us young people, we, had, we didn't have to worry about heart attacks or, you know, driving a tractor, or, uh, sorry, driving a forklift or something, you know, those things that they were talking about during safety day didn't, um, weren't as relevant for us, but morale and keeping our spirits up even during tough times um, was important. So we, we, we hosted that with Nerf guns and, and candy and inspiration. And that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. So that was, became my job and where I really got started on sort of um, being a champion for young people who have big dreams in space and um, helping make sure that a bureaucracy or the older generation or just the difficulty of some, doing something really hard didn't wear them down or, or frustrate them or, or take away their, their passion. So I became a, a champion. I, I made it my job to keep people's uh, flame lit, you know, no matter how, how old they got. Uh, that's amazing. Um, now I'm wondering, and I feel like uh, how you really welcomed into a certain environment, or, and I feel like NASA Walter, was your first environment that was really, you know, about space and learning about it, it, like you said, it was a whole new learning experience. Uh, do you feel like the way that you were welcomed into the environment um, and perceived as um, a young, passionate uh, young woman really, um, you know, impacted how you saw space and the industry itself? Because a lot of times if you're not welcomed into a certain space, you're like, eh, the space is bad. That space is not good. So um, do you think the people really and how they treated you made a difference. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You're very right. Um, being welcomed into that environment 
made a big difference for me. And, and it is important when new people come for us to make sure we're always welcoming them and making them feel included and, and important. That's a big part of, of the game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is. And I feel like when you're welcomed in to that space, uh, when you are at a certain position, when you are supposed to be welcoming or you can be welcoming, I feel like you should reciprocate that for somebody else to really just welcome them into the family, I would say. Uh, so let's go, let's go over your main project um, and let's have you explain a little more about that. Uh, and of course, I'll always ask you a question. Sure. So I teach uh, space kind training and it's an online course. It's about eight weeks long and we do an hour a week on Zoom. Um, and then we do, there's about an hour of assignments out of class where you read uh, my book, uh, the, new right, the New Right Stuff, um, using space to bring out the best in you. And we read a chapter of that every week. It's about half an hour reading. And then we do a half hour of assignments, like writing a thank you letter to a mentor who made a big difference for you or you know, going through things on your list uh, of things that have been not been done for a long time that have been weighing on you, like getting, paying a bill or, you know, fixing the car or something that, you know, you should do. And we encourage people to like, go and get all that. We do a big sprint, just go and get all that stuff done. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I have had like 20 to 40 people in the class and they get to know each other and they make like a, a, a group of bond and they support each other. And so that's been, it's been a lot of fun just to see people from across the space industry um, taking on their lives. It's, it's not enough just to get your dream job. You have to have your dream life too. Yeah, that is, that, that is very true. Um, and tell me something now for that, that, that training that you are giving, what is the sort of the qualification or have you been, you know, sh should you have done high school or college or I could even do it. So. Um, yeah, I, recommend people finish high school and at least be partly through college before they take it on. Um, it's a pretty adult conversation. And um, I think to appreciate what we're asking and what we're doing, um, it's, it's useful to be a little older. We've had some younger students and I don't know if they've just been distracted with their schoolwork or, uh, or it's just too intimidating to be with all these adults who are talking about their problems or something. But um, I, I think being a little bit older is helpful. Um, if you're super comfortable in that environment and, and willing to talk honestly about your life and what you want to take on, I'm sure we could, if you're really mature for your age, I'm sure you could, you could uh, Aww, you know, can thank handle. you. Yeah, sure, let's move on. Cause I'm so curious to hear about like, you know, most of them that we can. Yeah, that sounds great. What else, what else do you want to hear about? Yeah, sure. So you were you were mentioning this uh, the latest one, uh, the latest project that you 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 did. Um, well, there's also the other project I did want to mention, or they haven't mentioned yet, that I did want to bring up is called Yuri's Night, and that's the World Space Party that we do. And um, basically, it's like a, a, a annual space holiday. It's like St. Patrick's Day for space. So it's every April twelfth or the weekend closest to that. We encourage people all over the world to host big space parties and bring together music and dancing and costumes and art and science and get people excited about out of space. And so um, we've been doing that for 20 years and we've had parties in countries all over the world and the South Pole and everything. Uh, and so that's something I, if people are listening to this interview or interested in space, it's a great way to get involved. Just go to yurisnight.net, Y-U-R-I-S, nighthtnet and you know see if there's a party near you or um register just to host your own even if it's 15 people you know doing something near you it's, it's a lot of fun sorry i did not realize that i was muted sorry uh that happens quite often <laughs> That happens quite often these days. So you were mentioning something that happened interesting in 2005 um, uh, when you introduced yourself. You bought a ticket to space. Yeah, so that's been a lot of fun being part of the Virgin Galactic family. I got to meet Richard Branson and go on stage with him um, at a big air show and he gave me my ticket to space. Um, and it's been, it's come full circle now because last month I got to go to 
New Mexico and watch Richard Branson launch to space for his first space flight. And it was just a magical moment. We worked so hard to get there and the team works, has worked so hard to get us there. And to see all that work come to fruition and see Richard's face when he got back from space and greeting his grandchildren was just um, so satisfying and fulfilling. Um, and I'm super excited to have been a part of that and, and to work with Richard and, and to be getting ready now for, for my space flight next year. Oh my God. Oh my God. That, that is awesome. Um, and so, you know, how, how, what was your contribution to um, Richard's flight? And it was a, a, an amazing moment in history. And, you know, I remember I was also eating dinner while I watched that. And I'm like, oh my Lord. That's how I say, oh my God. So, oh my Lord. I am going to tell my grandchildren, I was there to see that. I was there to see that. I'm going to tell that, literally. So I see that on a lot of things. I'm like, I'm going to tell my grandchildren. And a lot of times there was low Roblox, because of course that's going to be old one day. So um, please tell what, was, what, what were your contributions? Um, and tell us more about the flight that you're getting ready for. <laughs> sure. So um, my husband and I bought our tickets to fly, like we said, in 2005. And then in 2010, he got hired to be the CEO of Virgin Galactic. So we moved out to Calif back to California. Um, and for 10 years, uh, he ran that effort. And, uh, you know, we supported him. And it was just incredible. So and then uh, because of my passion for um, inspiring the next generation of space leaders, I got involved with the younger folks at the company and created a, a young workforce group. And we did outings and activities and things. And that's the space kind of training grew out of that and started working with them. And then it grew to be working with more of the workforce. And so over the five years that I worked there, um, I probably trained 200 of our staff in um, you know, how to resolve differences and how to make peace with themselves and how to um, talk powerfully and how to listen powerfully. And um, it was really fun. And I've had got a lot of feedback from people about how they um, smoothed out relationships at work that weren't working really well and how they, um, you know, aren't taking things personally anymore. And it's been very um, just heartening to hear like how the, the work I've done with them as individuals has helped them be better managers and better engineers and better technicians. So I like to think there's, that's my small contribution to the, to the spaceship is making the, the teams that are building it, you know, work better. Uh, I feel like uh, that isn't a small contribution. That's a very big one because a lot of times, um, and I've seen personal, although that's cool experience, that's not like, cool space experience, but uh, it is that when teams are not working together, the project or whatever they are doing their best individuals, not as a team, uh, it isn't, you know, it may get graded the best or whatever, but it isn't that thing that really just, you know, inspires something or ignites something, the one that's, that's seeing that. But I feel like when you work as a team and everybody contributes, in their own respective position that they are in as a team, I feel like that's when you when you make match, like what what we what we witness. Um, now that we are coming to the end of the interview, and I'm super sad that we are coming towards the end, I'd like to share. Um, so I'd like to ask you two questions. First, what's your last message that you'd like to not your last message? God, that'd be weird. Uh, what's your message at the end of the interview uh, that you'd like to give out to uh, our audience, uh, especially uh, the younger audience that we have? My favorite message to give to students, especially, is to dream big. Um, I like to say, if you if it's if your dream is something that you could tell to an adult or professor, and they would say, "Oh no, that's impossible." then you're, that's perfect. You got the right answer. That's, that's just about how high you wanna be aiming. You wanna aim for something that people would currently say is impossible um, because we have a lot, a lot of life ahead of us. You know, probably have 60 years to work on this thing. And um, you know, it's gotta be something that's worth going through all the struggles of life to do that keep you interested and keep you challenged and keep you growing. Um, and then when you, to go with that, you have to ask for help because if you're doing something impossible, 
you're not gonna be able to do it by yourself. You're gonna need even no matter if, no matter how smart I am, no matter how cool I am, no matter how good I am, or how hard I work, I'm gonna need a whole team of people to make this something that big like real. And then the last piece is never give up because um, when you're doing something impossible, when you're going up against tidal forces like climate change or governments, um, it's going to be really hard and it's going to be scary and it's going to be overwhelming and there's going to be setbacks. Um, there's going to be things that you are that make you uncomfortable. Um, and the key is just to not give up. If you can just keep at it and keep keep the people around you going, keep each other going, you know, you can get there, but it might just, it's going to take something. When you're doing the impossible, it's just definitely going to take that extra effort. So hang in there. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I feel like that was uh, the perfect advice that should be going on to our youth, especially by a person like you. Um, and my last question to you is if anybody wants to reach out for, I hope, professional reasons, um, uh, how can they do so? Where is where you'd like to move with that to? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, probably. Yeah, I guess Facebook is the best place, just like you did. Um, uh, Facebook Messenger or on Facebook. Um, I'm Loretta. I think I'm Loretta Hidalgo Whitesides on Facebook. It's a lot of a lot of letters to spell, but um, you can find me there. Yeah, sure. I'll leave a link uh, in the description uh, when I upload it to LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Facebook. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Laura, for being on. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. It was uh, a very first for me, uh, but I feel like um, it can be for more people too. Uh, if you guys want to reach out, you know where to go. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And fingers crossed, we'll be coming more and more together, more in panel discussions, because when I know you, I annoy you, okay? I do that a lot. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and stay tuned next summer. Maybe you'll get to see me fly into space. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much.